That would be really good for them. Nope. Easy win, baby. <laughs> Another Hello, turn. good game. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, ghouls and goblins. Appreciate you spending your time here helping me with the channel. You know, your attention, your engagement. It is most appreciated. Thank you so much. Deposit those thumbs up down below. Within today's video, we'll be learning how to cheat in Magic the Gathering Arena, and it is simpler than you would have ever expected, right? Breaking down our deck list, talking about our strategies, synergies, getting into today's gameplay footage, and breaking down also our playlines and interactions. Wrapping up with our final thoughts and deck review, this is going to give you a good idea as a viewer whether or not the deck fits your playstyle, your moral respectability, and of course, your wildcard collection. <laughs> Thanks again. Uh, let's get into the deck, break it down, and see just what it takes to cheat in Magic the Gathering Arena. All right. 60 card, best of one, Boros or Lorehold style deck with 2.7 average mana value. 36 creatures, 24 lands. We are playing with the one and only Winota, Joiner of Forces. Four mana value, four power, four toughness, legendary creature, human warrior. Whenever a non-human creature you control attacks, look at the top six cards of your library. You may put a human card from among them into the battlefield tapped and attacking. It gains indestructible until the end of turn. Put the rest of the cards on the bottom of your library in a random order. Oh my gosh, right? So Winota has survived her entire life cycle so far, um, coming out in Ikoria, rivaling the power of things like the Great Henge and Embercleave, as far as I'm concerned. She's definitely on that level, and she's nice and cheap, right? This is a four drop, just like those other cards. We have massive power boost within Strixhaven, Blade Historian, a human which you can pull through Winota's ability, two power, three toughness for four mana, attacking creatures you control have double strike. Stop it. So that's how you cheat in Magic the Gathering Arena. It's as simple as that. We combo this in with one of the most powerful creatures I've ever seen in standard as far as versatility goes. Kenrith, the Return King for 5 mana, a 5-5 five, five for 1 mana. All creatures gain Trample and Haste until the end of turn. For 2 mana, put a plus 1, plus 1 counter on target creature. For 3 mana, gain 5 life. For 4 mana, draw a card. And for 5 mana, put target creature card from your graveyard onto the battlefield under its owner's control. Wow, stop it. Obviously, we are only using the 1 and 3 drops here, the white and the red, the blue, the green, and the black are not relevant to this specific build, but it does, you know, just go to show you how amazing Kenrith is um, because it can do a little bit of everything and it's a 5-5 five, five body, which is great. So I love it. We have the Snarls as well. This is a new addition, enters the battlefield tapped unless you reveal uh, planes or a mountain from your hand, which is, you know, really, really good as far as I'm concerned. I love the Snarls in aggro decks. We also incorporate Professor of Symbology, two power, one toughness. When Professor of Symbology enters the battlefield, learn. That takes us to our sideboard, filled with lesson cards, a new mechanic within Strixhaven. Environmental Sciences for two, sorcery speed. Search your library for a basic land card, reveal it, put it into your hand, shuffle, gain two life. We need to hit Winota as early as possible. If you need the land, take the land. If not, then we have things like Spirit Summoning for three drop, obviously the turn after our uh, Professor of Symbology, if we have four land. It creates a 3-2 spirit creature token. Non-human triggers Winota. We also have the Inkling Summoning if we need to get in the air through evasion, as well making a non-human token. Less uh, power and toughness, but again, it has the evasion through flying, which is nice sometimes. And we have Start from Scratch for three mana at sorcery speed. Destroy target artifact or deal one damage to any target. You know, taking out the Hench, taking out the Cleave, any of Winota's competitors, if you will. Filling the deck out from there, we've got a lot of non-human creatures to trigger Winota. Four copies of Alice of Life's Bounty, 1-1 one, one with lifelink, pay one, sacrifice it, give something we control protection until the end of turn from Chosen Color. Four copies of the Savior, 1-1, one, one, sacrifice it, target creature we control gains indestructible until the end of turn. Two copies of Usher of the Fallen, 2-1, boast for two to create a 1-1 one, one white human creature token. Doesn't trigger Winota, the human token that is, the Spirit Warrior still does. Moving on away from that, we've got three copies of the Elite Spellbinder. This is a human, so you'll be pulling it out with Winota, which is fine because it has flying and can gain double strike. Three power, one toughness. Again, with flying, when it enters the battlefield, look at the opponent's hand. You may exile a non-land card from it. As long as it remains exiled, its owner may play it by casting it for an additional two mana. 
Four copies of the Skyclave Apparition, non-human, would trigger Winota's ability. 2-2 two, two when it enters play, XL target non-land, non-permanent with converted mana fault, four or less. When it leaves the battlefield, the exiled card's owner will create an XX blue illusion creature token where X is equal to the exiled card's mana value. Again, four copies of Bone Crusher Giant, non-human, triggers Winota. 4-3, whenever it's the target of a spell, it will deal two damage to that spell's controller. Stomp at instant speed as the adventure. Damage can't be prevented. This turn stomp deals two damage to any target. We talked about Winota. We talked about the Historian. We talked about Kenrith. We talked about the sideboard. We've got the lands in play. That is it. This is how you cheat in Magic the Gathering Arena right now, right? You can play Salt Eye Ultimatum or you can play Winota. These are my two favorite ways. If you want to step down from that and be ultra competitive, we've got Mono White and Mono Red, but this is the way. If you want to climb rank in Magic the Gathering Arena right now, these are definitely the decks I suggest you play. It feels like cheating. You'll drop Winota on turn four and people will just scoop. You win the game right there. You won't even have to dig through your library sometimes because that's how powerful it is. People, if they can't deal with it the first turn and you know, they don't have a way to deal with it the second turn, it's just too much, you guys. So it's great. Um, you know, whether or not your moral compass allows you to play decks like this, uh, that's another question. Personally, I can do it sometimes, but not full time. And uh, I do still like to showcase it to you guys because I know that's one of your main priorities and goals is, um, you know, climbing up that rank in Magic the Gathering Arena, beginning to compete and uh, see if you have what it takes. Woof, right? Thank you so much for your time and attention. I really appreciate each and every one of you spending your time here with me today, watching and engaging within the video. A like if you haven't already, give it a comment, and of course, share it to your friends. Check out our link tree link from everything from Magic the Gathering Arena Assistant downloads, free. That's the tracker I use every day. You can also get uh, our affiliate links, whether it be some cool clothing, some sick gear, and of course, your Magic the Gathering Arena codes. It's all available there. You can join our contests and giveaways, which are all free to enter. Even our tournaments are free to enter with massive, massive cash prizes. So get in on that. It's just a way for me to show support to my loyal fans, uh, my devotees, if you will. Have a magical day. Enjoy the gameplay footage, and we'll be back to wrap up with my final thoughts. This is a new dawn. A new day, and there's two things for sure. We've got some content, and Maya's on her wheel. <laughs> the two things you guys can always consistently count on. We're playing Winota today. Uh, we feel like cheating. You know, I'm at 87%. I've been playing so much original, janked up goodness. Filling my heart with joy, but absolutely slaying my current rank. So we're gonna, you know... Take the, uh, I can't call it the high road, but in comparison to Ultimatum, maybe it is. What do you guys hate more? Salt Eye Ultimatum or Winota? Let's just get in its way. Maya can't stand mono red decks, right? We don't like to see them. A secondary robber of the rich. That is rich. Stop it. Okay, so if we pull another white source, uh, that's going to be ideal and we can snag it, but then they probably stomp or frostbite us. Goblin arsonist. Let's sacrifice a human, getting in their hand. There's no cleave. Good news. Stomp costs four. Oh, they get another. Nice. You always got a top deck Bone Crusher Giants, right? I mean, even we had one. They take a Winota. Buff up their knight. I would have played the Rimrock Knight for two rather than the Buffskis. Just personal opinion. Non human with Savior. Non human with Giant. Pass turn. We have Winota open. I would love to sneak out that Skyclave. And 
And we know their hand, right? They can't play the one stomp for four. It's still available to them, though. <gasps> okay, should we try to Winota for two? No, we should, uh... Just snag a giant, right? No attacks and turn. I would like Professor out as well, but at a certain point, we might be being a little too greedy. I took a land. Are they going to play our own Winota? They can't do it here on the stack, so they wouldn't get a trigger from it. But they could. They could stomp right here if they wanted. We have Savior for Indestructible. I think their best bet's probably to play our own Winota against us here. Yes. Let's see how it pans out. They're really thinking about it. Okay. So they're going to play the knight. I guess we keep the giant alive. We could have chump blocked. I didn't think that we were actually going to need indestructible there. More non-humans just tempting us down the road. We have nine life. Professor lets us learn. I guess. I mean, they have nothing for us to destroy. No annex or cleave. And then Elsaid continues to protect us if we need. Playing defensively. Pass our turn. We want to keep the giant up to defend against things. Labyrinth is good. 4 plus tap it. They can activate Labyrinth on us. Removing something from combat. Woof. Also does spend all their mana though. We give it protection from red. Or we're just taking the damage. If we give it protection from red, the giant goes to the grave. If we just take one, two, five damage, we're down to four. The chance of us pulling Blade Historian with two in our hand is slim. We ought to think about this. Maya, you're not helping. <laughs> I think that it's probably worth it because we get the Defender as well. Right? So we deal with the Giant. It goes to the Grave. They take two damage. Plus, now we have an indestructible Defender. They could still attack with the Arsonist and Charger to kill the Professor, though. It's just the Rimrock Knight we shut down. But if we block everything, they start top decking. We still have plenty of value. We can just take control of the match old school. Old school, baby! And they don't go for it. They're gonna like this. <laughs> so, we're not going to pull one with Winota. We know that. So, let's play one first. Oh, that Phoenix is hot. That Phoenix is good. And they get the uh, the Knight, too. Which, these cannot block, right? Let's remember that. I think I've made that mistake before on video. 
That's how we learn. <laughs> so they're in a, a similar spot, right? Where it's like, well, I don't really know what's going on here. I think we just take the five. But they have two blockers is the thing. That Phoenix is just going to kill us. We should have blocked that Rimrock Knight. Because I think we just die here. Unless we get three of the best pulls we've ever seen. We keep the new one attacking. Oh, whiff. Double whiff. You let me down, girl. So they just have lethal on us, right? Uh, both of these deal damage to us when we, they die too, right? And the Phoenix can pump itself up and, you know, we've got no defenders. So. Good game. We tried to wait it out and go for it. And uh, yeah, we just didn't get those pulls that we needed. Kenrith, where are you? Ugh, what a guy. He's hiding. Let's see if we can find him in the next match. All right, we're going to try all of this again. You know, we have Winota, we have three professors, which I think is good too, right? And the Snarl to get us going. We just need some more land. Oh, this is a pathway, not a basic land. Whoops. Doesn't much matter. Professor goes out, probably just gets stomped on. We still get to learn though, so that's always nice. Um, <laughs> so we don't really need flying. We may need the land, though. Right, like, if we don't top deck a land. Let's take sciences. I think it's the uh, best play to increase our base odds of general consistency. Alright. We just need one more land. Enchantment creature? Yeah, not artifact. But the henge is still an artifact. Or not the henge, lol. Ember cleave. Top deck land, we have a triple Winota. Double Winota. Lol. Maybe only single Winota. <laughs> Maybe zero a note if they're both frostbites or shocks. Oh my gosh. You dog. I still get it and I'm still going for it. Yeah! Kenrith is good. Okay. That's going to stop Monored. Unless they can deal with Kenrith, I think we win. And they just overextended by using two removals. Yeah, we're good. We're good. We're good. Double good with the Blade Historian. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Let's give everybody haste and trample. We want the Blade Historian to attack as well, right? And, ooh, I guess another Blade Historian. All right, because Kenrith's a legendary. And this is much better, right? This is a lot more... Uh, acceptable for how we want these play lines to go and unfold for us. Nice. And that was even with them removing many of our non-human attackers to limit the Winota, but you can see how powerful, like, a free Kenrith is still just, like, ridiculous, right? Okay, we go first. We've got, uh, some plays here. <laughs> Let's get Usher out. The Usher makes a human, which is a bummer, but it's still good. We'll go Professor turn two. Annoying, and I hate it. No blocks. I would have played defensively if I were them. In case we don't find the land. Right? Just for consistency. Just like last match. 
we don't find the land, we take it ourselves. We force the equation to self-balance. <laughs> oh, wow. <gasps> I'm surprised they didn't have a third. Rimrock Knight? Oh, wow. No boulder rush. You suck. Our land draw is abysmal. Gives us the dog, though, for the turn, so it's not a complete waste. We still get, you know, that second chance, and we just need to top deck that next land, and all is well. Maybe. We'll have to see. They're down to 14. I'm only assuming that an annex gets played here. We have the Skyclave Apparition available as well. Ooh. Did they put it back in their hand? Yeah, because they didn't kick it. That is interesting. No blocks. Getting hit for eight. Down to nine? Uh... Okay. Definitely need to land off the top. Topdeck.exe is running. Obviously not... Well, <laughs> let's force the equation ourselves if we have to. Bummer. Let's take a couple more chunks down to ten. I mean, we're keeping pace, right? We need that land, though. <laughs> We really need the land. What do they do here, though? I mean, we can still play defensively with our Skyclave if we need. It's hard to say. We have the blockers. We will survive. We know this. And it's still not being kicked. So we can kill a champion and oh but it's got trample that's a bummer let's resolve um let's go to blockers we may as well chump block uh this other one instead of the trample because we can't really stop any of that damage We trade. Well, we don't really trade. We just take out the champion. We kind of trade because we lose our dog. Ooh, we're down to five, though. That's so scary. No land. Oh, my God. We grab the land, gain two life, which is actually relatively helpful. Land goes out, another professor. Frig off, Randy. I feel so awkward about this this matchup. Two, four, six, seven, down to three. Woof. It's not lethal, though. We have the land for Winota. We have so many attackers. How can we make it through this turn? We have to play as defensively as we can. We gain two life. We've got an additional blocker. That trample is freaky deaky, though. They can kick it now, I think. For an additional two. That would spend all of their mana. I would actually appreciate that. So we already have Indestructible. Relic Robert in play. We can trade, like, you know, they can attack. This is good. Right, Maya? Right, Maya? Maya's going to play Winota for us. 
and then we go all in, and this should be beyond lethal. Nice. Oh, we waited it out. We had to force our own land draws with environmental sciences, but we get it. Good job, Maya. Let's do another. We get to go first. Um, the hand actually looks pretty good. Minus Blade Historian. I like to keep that in the deck so we're not whiffing as often with Winota. I mean, it's okay to have in hand, worst case, but it's cool to top deck it with Winota's ability, right? Professor. Let's just take Sciences in case. Right, we've seen how our land's been today, so let's just play it safe. We already have a 3-drop. Ouch. It would have been a better 3-drop then. Right, because we're losing our uh, defensive capability here. Disruption. Ooh, intapped. Good news for us. Let's just try to take two. They could Walry's Disruption. That would be really good for them. Nope. Easy win, baby! <laughs> Another turn for turn four Winona! A turn fur. <laughs> Okay, let's get another. Going first, I do not like the double blade historians in hand. That's like really, really bad. But, you know, we've got both land, we've got three land, we've got some early one drops, which we can take advantage of with the blade historian if we don't find Winona. Making a 2-1 token next turn. I believe, unless we get a Professor. Nice. It's a human, which is a bummer, but, you know, again, without Winota. Let's just go wide and use the Historian. They have an Emergent Sequence. Makes a 2-2. Two, two. Petty theft or something. Let's try to figure it out. What's you doing, Willis? What's you doing, Willis? Omen of the sea, that's fine. We're going to Spellbind into their hand. See what's going on. Oh, no. This is all very, very bad. They have no black sources in play. So it's got to be the stroke. Because they'd hold that up on us next turn. Unless they top deck a swamp. No. Okay, is it a land? No! Close. No cigar, though. So we have even, even, odd, odd. I don't want to play another odd. They're going to do it anyways, though. Let's force them to do it. Otherwise, they can just Extinction Event, uh, or sorry, Heartless Act. Let's force the Extinction Event right here. 
We're left with the two one ones. We top deck a land. We still hit for four. They killed a blade historian. We replay another blade historian. Hit for another four. Yeah. <laughs> That is not the correct card. This is not the card you are looking for. Hit for two. And now we just try to out-remove them, right? We force the extinction event, so let's try to go as wide as we can. And pray there's not another or a verdict. Oh! You jerk! You jerk! Okay, land off the top, right? Where is the land? We played the uh, summoning because that's the only thing they can take with the nightmare. I guess we should have taken environmental sciences for the third match in a row. If that goes to show you anything, right? You don't have the land, you have to take the sciences. If we can top deck that land, then they're just going to Heartless Act at instant speed. They also have the Disdainful Stroke. So if we top deck a land, I might uh, save your apparition. Just keep trying to push the agenda wide. Because they can't counter those. But we can't get away with that because there's not three planes. They have six. So they're talking about Stroke and Heartless Act. Let's just force it now. It's not lethal, it's only five. If we would have played the savior, they would have done it on the stack. Can't counter it. And they sack the omen here. Good call, I was gonna try to take it. They could have even uh, done it once we had targeted it. So they actually limit my stupidity. Okay, lethal on board. They have two cards we don't know about. Did they scry to the top or bottom? I forget. Hopefully it was the bottom. Land and play, they thin their library. That's fine. Watch them drop a uh, ultimatum on us. It's just like, oh, what do I even try for? <laughs> right? Professor Onyx has a sack. The apparition, they get a 3-3. Three, three. They're tapped, though. This is weird. We kill Professor Onyx. It's a draw engine. It's a life gain engine. I'm surprised they didn't take out one of our tokens. They would have survived. They could have totally blocked a token. Okay, that's good. And they have counter magic up. Shit. Good for them. Can we get a planes? Maybe we shouldn't have taken anything in case they remove it. But now we have indestructible. Pass turn. Oh gosh. So we want to have six mana to give Kenrith haste and everybody trample. Ooh, they scribe to the top. That is bad news bears.
It just gets countered, we know. We have two of them, that's why we throw Kenrith out to the... The sacrifice pit. The altar, let's be kind. It's not a pit. It's much classier. <laughs> You're really gonna like it. Um... You know, we could hit for three. Or 20 life. They do get it. Son of a bee! We bricked on land, though, right? That's why. Hmm. They're tapped, so we just don't give them the double turn. That's the only thing we don't give them, is the double turn. They need to take double turn. They need to take verdict. And another wipe. Let's see if they figure it out. They do. I mean, they play this deck for a living, right? Oh, man. Hold the Matum strikes again. That's a little bit like cheating as well, if you ask me, but I like Winota a little bit better. I like to attack, right? Some days I think about playing Ultimatum, and then I think about playing against it, and I'm just like, no, no, no. Don't do that to people. They don't take double turn. So they have two defenders. Verdict goes back to their hand. They're tapped. They already used their counter. I honestly don't mind. We have lethal here, don't we? Three defenders. No, not quite. Oh, Vornklex out first, and then they tap everything. Shoot! Okay, never mind. Never mind, then! I think they'll just win there. That was a good call. That was actually a really good call with them to mix Vornklex into the uh, equation. If we can pull another... Well, they still have the 8-8 eight -eight defender. Shoot! <laughs> And then they gain control of something as well. Good game. Good call by them as well. Uh, I, I do like that sequence of cards. At first I was like, no, no, that doesn't work. But the Vorn collects in play before the uh, enchantment saga there. Taps all of our guys. And then they take something, which is like, ouchies. Let's break down the deck, talk about it, do a review, and wrap up. Can I get a wolf wolf? Okay, so Winota's still silly. Um, we had a little trouble with the land in this video. Made out better than a video before this, though, where we got just creamed. But uh, that's why I was like, okay, you know what? We've been playing so much jank, original decks every day. Um, let's go back to what we know, right? Winota is so good. And I think Winota will survive her entire life cycle. I think it's gone on too long now for them to ban from standard. Why would they ban in the last three months a card that rotates out, right? I believe Ikoria rotates. Um, it's just, it seems so, so good. Does Ikoria rotate? We lose Throne, Theros, Ikoria, and Core Set, right? The last four sets leave, so... We get to keep Zendikar Rising, Kaldheim, and Strixhaven. If you're new to the channel, you don't know. Um, so yeah, like, she's gonna go. And I don't think she'll be banned. I think they'll just let her live out her life in peace. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. I put out a video, it was like, how's this card still not banned? And people are like, this is not the best deck. Hmm. I think it's pretty good this season. <laughs> Um, again, check out the link tree link for all of our, uh, you know, support. Everything's there. Just go for a snoop, right? And, uh, you know, have yourselves a great day. We'll see you soon in the next. And, uh, yeah, thanks again.